Hello. If you're thinking about buying the new Denon X3800H, then this video is for you. I'm going to share with you the vital information that I found out about this product. So before you spend your hard earned cash, then you must watch this video first. So go ahead, grab yourself a drink, put your feet up. What are people saying about this product? Let's talk about it today. So first of all, what I'd like to do is to go through Andrew Robinson's perspective of this receiver and let's see what he's got to say. 8K. This receiver doesn't limit 8K support to just one HDMI. So if you have a PS5, if you've got an Xbox Series X, for example, then you can connect this receiver or you can connect them up to this receiver and you should get 8K support and you should get variable refresh rate, all of those features for all of your products. According to Andrew, this receiver is also a little bit more straightforward and easy to use compared to the outgoing 3700H from 2020. Another key point about this receiver is it comes with Dirac. Now, what is Dirac or Dirac as some call it? It's named after the British physicist Paul Dirac. It's a room equalization algorithm and it's kind of uh, becoming more popular in the last five years and a lot of people say it's the best one. What does it do? It makes your speakers sound better in the space that you have. It's tuning your speakers to the room, basically. This receiver does, res does support Dirac Live, but the problem is it's due to release in March 2023. So if you buy it now, it's not going to have Dirac out of the box. And the other thing is that it's going to cost you extra. So you've gone out and you've shelled £1,500 on this receiver as it is and you're going to go out and spend extra on the direct as well if you want it now i've done some research into what it's going to cost you two tiers if you're looking at buying this receiver and you do want direct then if you get the limited bandwidth option it's going to cost you 249 dollars now what is the limited bandwidth option it's basically room correction for all of the bass up to about 500 hertz so it covers you from the bass to about the mid range for the upper mid range and the treble frequencies, so the higher frequencies, if you want that room corrected as well, then you'll have to go for the full bandwidth direct option, and that costs $349. And that's according to the Audioholics information. If that information is out of date or incorrect, please put it in the comments below. We'd be happy to have your knowledge. Now, do you need direct if you're buying this receiver? No, you don't, because it comes with Audacy room correction out of the box. Den and Morantz have been using Audacy room correction for at least a decade from what I remember. So a long time. And up until recently, it's been widely regarded as the best kind of out of the box room correction that you can get unless you go specialist. So let's have a quick chat about subwoofers. Another thing you might notice from the spec sheet, this AV receiver has four subwoofer outputs. This means you can connect up to four separate subwoofers, which I think is pretty amazing and it makes this product very unique, especially at the price point. Andrew Robertson tested his Audacy amp with his Arundel speakers in his review, and he says that Audacy resulted in a leaner, more forward sound than his own manual calibration that he did. He preferred his own manual settings. Now, let's talk about the sound quality. That's very important, and I think that's probably why most of you are here. So what are the trebles like? Now, Andrew Robinson thinks that the receiver is boosting the trebles, the trebles, the trebles, and it's making the whole mix sound a little bit more distorted, especially at high volumes, according to Andrew Robinson. He also compared the Denon receiver that we're talking about to the Marantz Cinema 50, which is kind of like a related receiver to this because Denon and Marantz are the same, same company. And he also compared it to the Onkyo RZ50. Overall, he thinks the Marantz is the smoother and more refined choice of the two, and it's clearly better for music according to Andrew Robinson. In terms of sound signature, so the sound profile, apparently the Denon is a bit more close to the Onkyo RZ50 than it is the Marantz. So the Marantz is probably offering that more laid back sound and the Denon is, more, is offering that more lean forward sort of sound. Now in terms of bass, Andrew Robinson says that the Denon seems to have the deeper, more controlled bass than the Marantz. However, he also says that the Marantz bass presentation sounds a little bit more matched to the rest of the frequencies. So perhaps the Marantz is offering a more grown up sound and uh, giving greater levels of refinement compared to the Denon. 
As for the mid-range, the Denon is apparently a little bit more forward than the Marantz, but it doesn't seem coloured, according to Andrew. In terms of the sound stage, the Denon lacks the sound stage compared to the Marantz, and he also says, in terms of sound stage, it's miles behind the Onkyo RZ50. So overall, for two-channel performance, Andrew Robinson does not really recommend this receiver for people who want to run a stereo setup and listen to music as like a kind of a main thing. However, for movies, Andrew Robinson does recommend the Denon and he says it's a lot more kind of on par with the Marantz and the Onkyo. Overall, the feeling I get when I watched, uh, I got when I watched Andrew Robinson's review is that the Marantz Cinema 50 and the Onkyo is probably a superior product when it comes down to kind of refinement in terms of the audio quality. Other important things to mention from Andrew Robinson's review, he experienced HDMI bugs when he used this receiver. Basically, he used the receiver's game mode, tried to get the PS5 to work, and then he had to manually do it on the, with the remote. So that suggests there could be a bug there. Now, let's move on to Shane Lee's uh, perspective of the Denon X3800H. He says it's flawless for the price point, and he says it does everything that you would expect it to. Now, I think that's a bit subjective because we all have different expectations. However, I think I know what he means. He liked that you can choose standard or directional settings for your subwoofers. Is another thing that kind of stood out. So basically, in the receiver, you can set the subwoofer to left and right, or you can set it to mono mono. Shane also described the sound profile of the Denon to be on the brighter side of neutral. He said that the vocals sounded a little bit thin when paying, playing back his Nora Jones songs that he was listening to. He also said that the X3800 was a little bit more ear fatiguing than other receivers that he'd heard. In terms of bass, Shane says that the bass output is plenty beefy sounding, according to him. Techno Dad also did a video or a couple of videos on this Denon X3800H. And um, yeah, he didn't really have too much to say because he's not fully tested the product, but overall he likes the flexibility that the receiver gives, especially when it comes to 11.1 Oro 3D. He also prefers the new user interface. It seems a little bit easier according to him. So that's kind of what Andrew Robinson said as well. So that looks like it's probably moving in the right direction there. Moving on to the written reviews. So let's go on to What Hi-Fi. Now here's the funny one with What Hi-Fi. What Hi-Fi says the X3800 has a refined warm sound. It's funny because everyone else up until this point, so we've heard from Shane Lee, we've heard from Andrew Robinson, they've described the receiver not as warm, but as actually bright. So what Hi-Fi disagrees there, unusually. The X3800 has been described here as dynamic and distinct, and they prefer the sound of the 3800 to the X3700, the previous gen. So apparently it's sounding better than the old model. The bass is solidly controlled, and the voices are rich sounding with a warmth and naturalism which is more engaging. Again, it's kind of a disagreement with Shane Lee. Shane Lee was describing the voices as thin sounding, definitely not rich sounding, according to him. What Hi-Fi also compared it to the Yamaha RX A6A. Denon feels a little bit more gentle and laid back compared to the Yamaha. And they also described the Yamaha as strident so it kind of suggests that the Yamaha probably has a little bit more of a dynamic sound in use when, it, when compared to the Denon x 3800 To sum it up, they are saying that the x 3800 h is an all-round performer with plenty of features. They like the six HDMI ports and they like the fact they're all HDMI 2.1 compliant. Also, what they like is that the receiver has 11.4 support so it's offering more channels of processing now however if you do want to make use of all the 11 channels available for your surrounds then you're going to need a separate power amp to power the last two channels so it goes all the way up to nine channels when it comes to uh, processing and power amplification but if you want those final two channels you will need power amplification for that what hi-fi did not like is that the price has increased for this range of products it's gone up by 50 percent up to about 1500 pounds but at the same time i guess everything is going up in price at the moment so i'm it's going to be something that you're going to see in a lot of products the only thing that's not going up is my wages those stay i mean kind of right about there maybe a bit down actually anyway let's go on to audio science review 
Now, here it gets very interesting. So quoting Amir from Audio Science Review, if anyone doesn't know this website, what this guy Amir does on this website, he measures the audio gear and he gets the actual factual kind of data from the, from the gear rather than subjective. It is with much sadness that I cannot recommend the Denon AVR X3800H. So Amir is saying that the receiver's DAC has taken a large step backwards with higher distortion spikes and it's causing the unit to underperform against the old X3700 model. The signal to noise ratio and distortion ratio is over about 10 dB uh, underneath the previous model. So to put that into perspective, this receiver is now in a totally different level of sound quality, measured sound quality, compared to the previous receiver, the X3700H. I think that's a bit concerning, to be honest, because that should be improving, not going the opposite way. Yeah, and I know a lot of people in the audience today, you're going to be uh, a little bit annoyed about that because me, I was actually considering buying a Denon or Marantz um, this year or the year after because I've noticed that their DACs are getting better scores than, um, than other products like from Yamaha and stuff like that over the last few years. And now this has kind of put me off. Another important thing to mention is Amir said that uh, the unit he tested got quite hot to the touch and the fan wasn't coming on inside the unit. You, the unit. Now that's really concerning because if you are watching a movie and the receiver is getting hot, first of all, you've got more wear on the parts and secondly, the receiver is going to overheat and shut down eventually. And I tell you what, personal experience here, I had a Marantz receiver that I saved up for for ages back in 2014. And um, I was, I kind of idolized this receiver. This is what I wanted and um, got it. And that thing was always overheating, shutting down. And um, ever since then, ever since that bad experience, I sent it back for repairs multiple times. Ever since that bad experience, I never went back to Marantz ever again. And I've only stuck with Yamaha ever since and I've never had any bugs. Disclaimer, this is just my personal experience. It's not saying that this is gonna happen to you. If you get a denim receiver, it's gonna blow up or anything like that. I'm just telling you my experience. Anyway, moving on to the forums. So the forums are littered with negative comments and the X3800 is still pretty new. So the fact that people have bought this product, taking the time to go and litter up the, the forums with negative comments is interesting. So one user upgraded from an X2700 and was disappointed with his upgrade. He says that his old 2700 had zero HDMI issues and after he switched to the 3800, leaving everything else exactly the same, his setup hasn't changed. Only the receiver's changed. Apparently now he's receiving, he's, he's having HDMI handshake issues with his receiver and his BenQ projector is flickering and showing no signal all the time. Also, Netflix refuses to play 4K UHD, and I'm guessing because the HDCP 2.3 handshake is failing. Another forum user found issues with the HDMI handshake as well, and I'm guessing this is going to be related to Andrew Robinson and what he experienced in his video review. Another forum member has mentioned that he's having some problems setting up speakers in different zones. So you might have a zone one, like your home cinema zone, and a zone two where you've got two separate speakers somewhere else, I don't know, could be kitchen or whatever. And um, yeah, apparently this guy is having some problems with zone one and zone two, and it's not switching correctly. I'll put the uh, information in the comments below. I've done some more research on this receiver, but everything else that I've read, it doesn't really add anything else to this video. It's not adding any more value. So I'm gonna leave that out. I'll put some more information in the description or a pinned comment. My thoughts on this based on the information that I've read. Now, obviously I've not heard the product, but I've heard about it. So why do I think you should shortlist the Denon X3800H? Now, the only thing that I can think of is that it has direct support and that seems expensive to me to pay extra for that um i can't really think of any other reason why i would recommend this receiver specifically before i read amir's review i would have said get the denon because i know that their dax of are, are 
class leading at the moment. They've, they've, their DAX are outperforming many of the receivers that cost actually more. And um, now I'm reading his review that's gone out the window. So perhaps buy a used 3700, maybe. Uh, that doesn't have the HDMI issues as well, according to some people. Though it did when it first came out, if I remember correctly, a couple of years ago, there were some HDMI problems. So this could all get fixed with updates. We don't know. Now, why would I not shortlist this? Well, I think, first of all, there are some inconsistencies there. In term, When you look at the information, some people are saying oh, it's warm, but I think most people are saying that it's very bright. So I think this receiver is going to be not as refined as others in the audio department. And if that's really important to you, I'd skip this one. Now, if you want better two-channel refinement, perhaps go for the Marantz, perhaps go for an Onkyo, maybe not the Onkyo, but maybe the, the Marantz. Another interesting pr proposition is the NAD T778, if you haven't found that. That also has a Dirac function, if I am right on that. It's a bit more money. Also, you could consider an amplifier from Anthem. They're a little bit behind on the behind the time zone when it comes to specs. They're always a little bit delayed, like the Yamahas, the Denons will be first to adding new features to their receivers. But Anthem, if you want the audio quality, is my recommendation. So overall, I can't really recommend that you buy or not buy this receiver. But going off the information, I would personally not add it to my shortlist if I were in the market, but maybe you would. Uh, if anybody else has some information that I might have missed in this video, please add it to the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. It's always good to share information. So that's another video from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.